Hey there YouTube, Petey Two Finger here with a, uh, this is a quick video, I didn't even, I've got like my dirty laundry hanging out behind me. This is how to, how to clean your keyboard. And this video is more for, more for frugal people, or let's say you have a keyboard that you, you love. Um, most normal people would not have time for all that, as people like to say. But as I'm demonstrating here, it's um, it's really not that difficult to go through this process as one would perceive, especially if you have a, an electric screwdriver. So the first step is to remove remove all the fasteners from the keyboard. This is a wireless keyboard. But this can be done with, uh, I've done this to keyboards of all varieties over the years. So you, you remove all of the screw, fastener screws from it. And you know what, I think, I, I think I, this is the second time I've done a video on this. Um, so yeah, you get all the screws off and you lightly crack it apart. You'll see I, I went the kind of the wrong way. This is a membrane style keyboard. And looking inside at this membrane, there's just a little bit of dust and debris. So there is a circuit board up here. Um, again, this is a wireless keyboard. Circuit board, the battery compartment is in this section of the keyboard, the bottom, and then this membrane. So I merely just gave it a quick removal of the dust. You could go at that with a brush if you'd like. But really the point of what we're going to be cleaning is this. This is where if you start in trying to clean this with some Q-tips or a little brush, you're going to go crazy because you can never get it all clean. So what you do is you get this part separate and you can remove an individual key if there's an issue. This is a sturdy keyboard. This is a Logitech. It's an older model. But these are my favorite ones for cleaning. And basically what, what I do at this point is I will take it into a utility sink or even a bathroom sink or a shower if you have to. The, sho the shower head is nice because it has that spraying water. But you will get it wet and then you can use some any type of soap. You could even any kind of solvent or soap that you have that is a soap solvent but not a strong, like I wouldn't want to run uh, paint thinner clean this unless it was something really stubborn but you would then remove the markings but you're going to want to like you could take some dish soap and water that down and get a good froth up bubble it up and then apply that to this and then go ahead and use a uh, scrub brush and try to drop it down uh, pl plop these out a lot of times I do it upside down and I will run a toothbrush through each to get the sides of the cubes because they're shaped kind of at an angle the the keys so however you can uh, attempt to try to really give it a good one. Now first thing that you'll notice is there is going to be debris. So you can try to knock that, a lot of that debris and get that into the uh, garbage receptacle. But yeah, you knock it around and then you go ahead and get in there and scrub it. However you go through that cleaning process is really up to you. You can kind of go nuts. But giving it just a clean, uh, quick two minute kind of overall cleaning with a brush and then uh, knocking it dry and rolling a towel around it and kind of knock it around and shake it to get all the water out and then take a look at it, see the spots you missed, maybe go over and do some fine tuning. And then when you're done, you're gonna wanna shake it and try to get all the water out from wherever you can. And then you can use a hair dryer. Be careful, we don't wanna melt anything. Or really the best way to do it, just be patient and let it sit overnight. You could do something like, you know, if you wanted to cure it in an hour, uh, you could preheat the oven and then shut that oven off at like 100 degrees, get the oven up to say around 100, nothing more than that. You don't want to soften or melt anything, but use your imagination as far as getting it dry. You just want to make sure that there isn't any overabundance of liquid when you reassemble it. And then you pop the clamshell back together, flip it over, and run the screws in. And it's like having a new keyboard. So yeah, this process is a little time consuming. If your keyboard is really that nasty and funky, you may want to, you know, they're cheap, especially if you go to a Goodwill, you'll often find really, if you're using a keyboard with a cable on it, I would encourage you to don't even, don't even spend the time. This is more for 
something you really like, um, like a wireless keyboard, something that's a little bit more expensive. Because most more oftentimes than not, if you go and take a look at the Goodwill, they have USB style plug keyboards. The PS2 ones are getting harder to find, and the DIN ones are almost impossible. But you can still find those. But just for like two or three dollars, what you would consider what you would spend on a coffee at the gas station, you could just replace a keyboard. So certainly, I'm not suggesting that you know why would you go to through all of that. Well, for me, I don't want to spend three bucks when I can take a half hour, 15 minutes. Is you know making this video is obviously taking a lot longer. But uh, it make, certainly makes sense to me. Where it might not make sense to you, it's no reason for you to attack me in the comments section. Because I realize that there's a lot of alternatives besides doing this. But if you are you have a keyboard and it's messy and you've never did it, maybe you found this video. And this would put your mind at ease that this is how you do it. And that when you turn it upside down, no, the keys don't all, all fall out of it. It really isn't a big deal to do. Uh, you just don't want to, you know, take kind of take your time when you're removing the screws and check the lengths of them. You may find that some screws may be slightly longer than another, and you're going to want to put them in separate cups or draw out on put put the unit down on a piece of paper and trace it, the image, and then plop the screws where they individually came out of as a reference for reassembling it. But typically, but nowadays it's no nonsense. All the screws are going to be about the same length. So there really isn't much to worry about. It's not really that big of a deal. The main thing is that you're going to want to make sure that it's dry before you reassemble it. And good luck and have fun cleaning your keyboards. I'll tell you what, you're going to feel great when you, the whole thing is put back together and it, it's working like new again. And then the next day you wake up and you sit down at your computer. You have an incredible sense of self-worth and pride in your accomplishment your wonderful clean spotless keyboard so enjoy